So our work topic for today is about the automatic cash application in NetSuite. This feature became available with our 2021.2 release. So in some of your customer accounts, it may not be available because they might be upgraded um, mid-October, okay? But for my demonstration, this is already upgraded. My account is already upgraded, so that's there's no need to enable something in NetSuite, okay? So what is automatic cash application? So this would automate your bank reconciliation in the cash application process. It has an intelligent matching rule within the system that would help user identify open invoices. So again, if you're importing data in NetSuite, it doesn't sometimes um, get, uh, get much automatically in the system because we don't have any NetSuite transactions to that. So this feature will help you um, apply customer payments to open invoices without going through the to the normal process wherein you have to create the customer payment first before you can match it, okay? Um, one of the benefits of using this feature is um, it would eliminate data entry errors. So um, as the users tend to uh, um, make mistakes applying a payment to a specific invoice, um, this feature will actually um, help them especially the system would suggest customers or invoices that are existing in NetSuite, okay? So um, what are the prerequisites when using this feature? Of course, you definitely have to uh, set up a bank or credit card. So make sure that this box is also enabled. So you can utilize the match bank data, okay? Um, for every feature, there will be limit limitations, and I have um, listed four limitations of using this feature. One is the cross-currency and cross-subsidiary invoice application to a payment. Currently, that is not supported because um, you cannot apply an invoice to a payment from a different subsidiary and to a different currency. Discounts and credit memos are not considered during the invoice application. Um, what else? Um, there's another two, um, I think the consolidated payments for parent-child entities, that's also not supported. And lastly, you cannot be able to customize the layout, the page layout of the cash application. So if you have custom fields from your invoices or from your customer payments, you cannot bring that over to the cash application layout. So, um, so let me just uh, show you the navigation path for the uh, bank application, uh, sorry, cash application. So we have here the link on this Match Bank data page. You can also um, navigate to transactions, bank, and then automated cash application. Or you could just type that on the global search bar. So cash application. There you go, okay? So there are three ways to access that page. So as regards to the permissions, we uh, it was uh, mentioned that the user should have at least a create permission level for customer payment, at least edit permission level on the invoices, and finally, at least full permission level for the cash application. So where do you find that? cash application permission on the roll. So it's under the uh, transaction sub tab. Uh, here it is, okay. All right, so for the import methods, what are the import methods that this feature is supporting? So basically everything, okay? Like the bank feed suite app, um, the manual file import using the bank statement parser suite app, the, the core bank statement parsers, like for example, our CSV, CSV import template, all right? I just wanna highlight that the, the type of imported bank lines that can be processed with this feature has anything that uh, is, is something that has a positive impact on your bank account. So it can be a credit, 
customer payments and deposits okay it will not the any debits or a credit uh, or a negative amount from the bank data will not be processed or will not even be available on the cash application page all right so before i go to my uh, demonstration let me just show you my prepared test application import template okay um i have um, filled in some information in the invoice column and for example this one the payer i intentionally put this as acres but i don't have that in the system um, but later on, the system would suggest a different type of customer or a customer similar to Acres. So that's one thing that is good about the feature is that um, it um, uses an algorithm that um, will that the system um, will help users identify the customer or the invoice. So what? How? I mean, sorry. How can um, the system identify a a customer first is through the invoice number okay if there is no invoice number then um, the system would suggest a customer that is most similar to the payor okay again to the payor on your bank data okay how about for the invoices how will the system identify the invoice Again, it's also on the invoice ID, but that invoice should uh, be of the same currency and of the same subsidiary. Okay. And lastly, if there is no invoice ID, then it would um, be applied on the base amount or on based on the account preferences. So we have here a setting under AR here. So if the payment that does not have any invoice number, it will be applied on the first, on the payment first, then to the oldest invoice. Then you can have the option to maybe apply it to the invoice with the oldest date of aging preference. And finally, the uh, payment will be unapplied. All right, so let me just uh, show you um, again my CSV import. Okay, so I have here how many? Eight bank data. And then I have already um, uploaded this before our meeting in NetSuite. Okay, so if I go back to my match bank data, I have here seven. Y7 because the first line was already matched by the system. Okay. Okay. Here it is. So this item is uh, ready to be reconciled. But first, we have to match and generate a customer payment for these um, remaining items. All right. So this is the uh, gist of our uh, agenda. So let's process the, the customer payment through this page, automated cash application. And then the account number auto populates, okay? So we have here different statuses to review. Why does it say to review? Because again, the system will um, give you an option to review the, uh, the invoice number or the customer. So as, as you remember on my CSV template, I only put their acres, but the system suggested it to be 80 acres. Okay. You also have here a facility to um, review the invoice details by, by collapsing this um, icon. Okay. So it will be up, this payment will be applied to invoice 741. But if you, want to check other invoices click on this view invoices and then you could um, maybe replace that to invoice 742 okay why is it um, um selecting june 10 i mean the invoice with this date 
June 10 because of the, your setup here in the accounting preferences. Okay, that is based on the oldest invoice. All right. So if this this is okay now, collapse it and check this box. So this is now ready to be submitted. Okay. Uh, another thing we have here a um a message. So this payment contains incorrect customer or invoice information. So on my back imported bank data i only put 936 so it um the system match it to the similar invoice but with a leading zero which is 0936 okay so if this is okay you could just click on this box okay we have here the last item payment um it's grayed out because when you create a payment in a suite using the manual process, you need to have a customer, okay? So th that's also the case with this feature. You need to have a customer before you can generate a customer payment. So it's telling us that there is no existing customer that for payer Merck. So if I go to the uh, drop down list, so that customer is not yet existing in the account. So you have the option to select a customer here. Let's uh, choose, how about this one, Oracle. So choosing a customer, it will prompt you a message to make a rule. So meaning if in the future, if you receive a payment from Merck, that payment will be a associated to Oracle, okay? So again, you have the option here to make a rule or you could just ignore it, okay? If you make a rule, an entry from the customer mapping rules will be created. So in the future, you will be able to match any payments coming from Merck to Oracle, okay? So I will just, for now, select don't make rule. There you go. So the checkbox becomes available, okay, to be checked. So we have like three statuses here, ready to submit, to review, and no customer. So when everything looks good, let, let's create a customer payment for these three um, items. Click on submit. It will tell you that there will be three customer payments that will be generated by the system. Just click OK, and you will get directed to this processing status page. Refresh. It will take a while. There you go. So the payment 125126 are created by the system to match those imported bank data. All right, so let me just go. Let me just show to you the payment record. All right, so this payment was applied to an existing invoice. Nine, oh no, no, to, to Oracle. So right now, this customer does not have any available open invoice. So this is considered unapplied, okay? Let me go back to the uh, match bank data page. So if I select the uh, bank account again, do notice that the uh, three bank lines are now missing. They're not missing, they were actually processed as uh, customer payment, okay? So as as because they are being processed been processed by the system, they will no longer be available on this page. Okay. So what is our next thing to do? So because you have generated a payment, you can reconcile those customer payments. So from from here, you could access the reconcile account statement page. And there it is. 
you can now reconcile this of uh, three customer payments. So that's it.